Welcome uh, everyone and thanks for joining today's Lunch and Learn. Uh, we will be going over the overview of the special education process. My name is Amber Ham. I am the training and outreach coordinator with Kentucky SPIN. Um, if you would like to go ahead and, and throw your name in the chat uh, and tell us where you're from. Um, we're gonna jump right in. Kentucky SPIN, <clears throat> excuse me, is funded by the US Department of Education under IDEA. Since 1988, when Kentucky first received a PTI, Kentucky SPIN Parent Center provides training, information, support for children and youth with all types of birth, uh, disabilities, birth through 26 years and beyond, their parents, families, and professionals. Uh, and it's also good to know that at Kentucky SPIN, we do not require a diagnosis to support a family. At Kentucky SPIN, we do not act as attorneys and we are not advocates. However, we do empower families to effectively advocate for their children and provide a peer-to-peer -peer support to help families access needed information and resources. Students with disabilities receive appropriate educational services as a result of three primary laws. As you see here on the screen, this is a visual uh, that shows what the 504 ADA covers as well as IDEA. You can see that the top umbrella is much larger um, and that it covers a larger variety, um, but IDEA is included under that 504, which is a federal um, and, and it protects students. Whereas IDEA, there is a smaller portion of individuals that are covered. Here's a chart of how IDEA flows from federal to state to district. Everyone should have an understanding of IDEA. Then have a knowledge of your state's special education regulations and then how those are interpreted at the district level. As you see at the top, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, as I have said, um, can go under the federal law. Um, when you flow down, Kentucky Administrative Regulations, which is also known as KAR, sometimes you may hear it referred to as CARA, is state law. And then it trickles down also to local policies and procedures, which is your public school district. Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 applies to any agency receiving federal funds. No additional source of federal funding provides procedural safeguards. Five hundred four and ADA definition of disability. Disability is defined broadly under Section 504. When determining whether a student has a physical or mental impairment, the school district must not consider the improvement of a disability caused by mitigating measures, such as medications, hearing aids, prosthetics, mobility devices, and other means. The language on mitigating measures was added in the ADA Amendments Act of 2008. Section 504 protects the rights not only of individuals with visible disabilities, but also those with disabilities that may not be apparent. And it is important to know, as seen on the screen here, um, the definition of disability, physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one major life activity, a record or history of disability, or an individual perceived as having a disability. 
If we look at major life activities, um, here is a list of activities that are covered under Section 504 and includes, but is not to the activities listed, not limited to the activities listed below. So caring for oneself, communicating, concentrating, bending, breathing, eating, hearing, um, lifting, seeing, sleeping, thinking, walking, working. As a student is determined to have a disability, if he or she has a physical or mental impairment affecting a body system that substantially limits one or more major life activities, including these listed above. Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, continued. IDEA guides how states and school districts provide specially designed instruction and related services to children with disabilities. Funded in part with federal dollars, Part C, Early Intervention, Birth through Three, uh, formerly known as First Steps, which is now known as the Kentucky Early Intervention System, and Part B, which would be public schools ages three through 21. IDEA definition of disability continued. The, ch the child's disability must show an adverse effect that impedes progress where educational performance is significantly and consistently below the level of children of similar age must meet criteria of one or more disability categories and must need specially designed instruction and related services. A medical diagnosis doesn't automatically qual uh, qualify a child to receive special education services at the school level. An evaluation is to, an evaluation to determine eligibility must occur. The student must meet criteria of one or more disability categories and must need specially designed instruction and related services. You will have um, an eligibility form included in your packet of information that should have been given in the chat box. I'm gonna pause for just a moment to see if there's any questions. So now we're gonna dive a little further into the overview of special education. IDEA part B, ages three through 21. Although it is required by law to have an annual review meeting, a parent can call a meeting at any time. Evaluations are typically every three years. However, the ARC may decide that the previous evaluation is appropriate and they may adopt it. Therefore, another evaluation would not typically happen for another three years. However, if the parent feels that there should be another evaluation before the three-year mark, they can request that an evaluation be performed. An example of why an evaluation may be needed before the three-year mark is the student's situation may have improved or worsened, and they may or may not any longer need special education services. Requests should always be made in writing. Also keep in mind, if your child has had any type of diagnosis change or update, then you may need to go ahead and ask for that reevaluation before the three-year mark as well. Let's talk a little bit about referrals. Step one, referral, a child is identified as possibly needing special education and related services. Parents may be asked if the school district can evaluate their child. Parents can also call the public school district and ask that their child be evaluated or referral or request for an evaluation. 
This request may be verbal or in writing. Parental consent is not only needed, it's required before the child may be evaluated. In IDEA 2004, it states the evaluation needs to be completed within 45 school days, unless the state has already had a timeline in place after the parent gives consent. In Kentucky, we already had 60 days after the parent gives consent in regulation, so Kentucky stands by that and goes by 60 school days. Uh, and that is also a very important thing to remember. 60 school days does not count weekends or summer break uh, or holiday breaks. It's going to go by um, school days. So if an evaluation is started at the end of a school year, it may not be finished until the beginning of the next school year. Something we always remind everyone when you are requesting a referral or an evaluation, please, please put that in writing. Uh, you want to make sure you have that not only for yourself and your records, but also that so that the school has that for theirs. How to request a referral in writing. Um, as you see here on the screen here, we absolutely love this example. Um, of a letter on how to request a referral. You all will be receiving these slides so you can um, have access to these resources to utilize at a later time. What if the referral is denied? The district must provide prior written notice. Under IDEA Part B 300 Child Find, the state must have effective policies and procedures to ensure that all children with disabilities residing in that state, including children with disabilities who are homeless, children or are wards of the state and children with disabilities attending private schools, regardless of the severity of their disability and who are in need of special education and related services are identified, located and evaluated and receiving parental rights. Let's talk just a little bit more about prior written notice. Parental rights under IDEA include the rights to receive prior written notice from the school each time that the school proposes to take or refuses to take certain action with respect to your child. Specifically, the school must provide parents with a prior written notice each time that it proposes to initiate or change identification, evaluation, or educational placement, proposes to initiate or change provisions of faith to your child, and that stands for a free appropriate public education, refuses to initiate or change the identification, evaluation, or educational placement of your child, and also refuses to or initiate or change the provision of fate to your child. The purpose of prior written notice is that it serves as a vehicle of communication between the schools and families it is very important that parents are always well informed about whatever action the school intends to take or intends not to take about their child. Through prior written notice, the school can ensure that parents are up to date on what's what it's proposing or refusing to do as early as possible so that the parent can participate in the school's proposed actions or respond to its refusals. Pause for just a moment. Okay. Contents of prior written notice must contain a comprehensive description of the action proposed or refused by the school system according to IDEA and notice must include a description of the action proposed or refused, 
an explanation of why the school proposes or refuses to, to take the action, a description of each evaluation procedure, assessment, record, or report the school has used as a basis of their decision, a statement that the parent of a child with a disability have protection under the procedural safeguards and how the parents can obtain a copy of them, sources for parents to contain to obtain assistance in understanding these provisions, a description of other options that the IEP team considers and the reasons why those options were rejected, and a description of other factors relevant to the school's proposal or refusal. When parents should receive prior written notice, as we've said, you as parents must receive prior written notice from the school a reasonable time before the school plans to take or refuses to take action. Related to the identification, evaluation, or educational placement of your child, parents should also receive prior written notice a reasonable time before the school plans to take or refuses to take actions related to the provisions of FAPE to your child. How prior written notice is to be written. All written correspondence from the school must be in a form that the general public can understand. For example, it must be written in the native language of the parent. If the parent does not read English or in the mode of communication <clears throat> that the parent normally uses, such as braille or large print, unless it is clearly not feasible to do so. If the parent's native language or other mode of communication is not written language, the school must take steps to ensure that the prior written notice is translated orally or by other means to the parent in his or her native language or other modes of communication and that the parent understands the contents of the notice. Look, oh, we've got something in the chat. I'm gonna pause for a second. We have a question. What should I do if I have not received prior written notice? If you have not received prior written notice, um, at that time in writing, I would suggest that you contact, um, you first start with your IEP team, um, your student's counselor, the principal, the teacher, special education teacher. And if you are not getting a response, um, or receiving that prior written notice, then you can always take the next step to reach out to the, um, the DOSE or District Special uh, Director of Special Education Services in writing, requesting why you didn't receive prior written notice and how you can get that. Step two would be the child is evaluated. The evaluation must assess the child in all areas related to the child's suspected disability. The evaluation results will be used to decide the child's eligibility for special education and related services and to make decisions about an appropriate educational program for the child. IDEA requires that schools conduct appropriate evaluations of the students who are suspected of having a disability. An appropriate evaluation must be implemented by a team of knowledgeable and trained evaluators who must utilize sound evaluation materials and procedures and must be administered on a non-discriminatory basis. If you have an IEE, it will only cover the evaluations done in school. And IEE stands for Independent Education Evaluation. So make sure all appropriate, appropriate areas are marked 
to be checked before the evaluation takes place. Step three, eligibility is decided. A group of qualified professionals and the parents look at the child's evaluation results together. They decide if the child is if the child with a disability as defined under IDEA. Parents may ask for a hearing to challenge the eligibility decision if they disagree with what, with what has been um, told to them. And they may ask for a hearing to change the eligibility decision if they disagree. They may also request an independent educational evaluation as indicated in the previous slide. Note, an IEE will be for the category the child was evaluated for through the school. School districts often attempt to restrict the parent's choice to a list of approved evaluators selected by the school. In 2004, the Office of Special Education Programs, OSEP, issued a policy letter to clarify that parents have the right to choose their independent evaluator for special education and related services, and the IEP team will write the IEP for the child. And it is extremely imperative um, that the child is being uh, evaluated under the appropriate category or categories. It doesn't have to just be one category um, with a suspected disability. And, and as stated a moment ago, uh, if the child is not found to um, need special education services with the evaluation performed at school. If it's an inappropriate evaluation category that the school is evaluating under and you do go for an independent um, <clears throat> evaluation, they're going to be doing the same inappropriate evaluation that the school did. So it's really imperative to look over this list that we provide to you uh, in your resources to see what category your child would need to be evaluated under to best suit their needs. Here is another visual that we just absolutely love um, that really, shows how IDEA works. It covers everything a child needs to receive, specially designed instruction. If you notice, the evaluation is your foundation. Um, and then moving forward, the present levels of educational performance or the PLOP um, that we will talk about just a little bit later. Um, and then our related services and supports and goals and objectives hold up part of this house. And once all of the pieces are put together um, and the house is structured properly or the IEP is structured properly, then the child um, has educational success. IDEA requires that an IEP includes present levels of academic achievement and functional performance. IEP meetings are held and the IEP is written. The IEP team gathers to talk about the child's need and write the student's IEP. Parents and the student, when appropriate, are part of the team. If the child's placement is decided by a different group, the parent must be part of the group as well. Before the school system may provide special education and related services to the child for the first time, the parent must give consent. The child begins to receive services as soon as possible after the meeting. The process can be compared to planning a trip to another city. You need to know where you are beginning as well as what may take your trip more, may make your trip more challenging. The team will see where your child is beginning and how the disability impacts learning.
Present levels must include all of the above and be current, relevant, objective, measurable, and obtainable. This is about what your child currently knows and is able to do. It looks at how your child's disability affects his or her achievement and involvement in general education curriculum. This information is used to develop the remaining sections of the IEP. Information from a number of sources is used in order to get a full picture of what your child can do, including their strengths, challenges, and interests. Some sources could be included. So when we look at the PLOP or present level of academic achievement, functional performance, uh, it should be a snapshot of your student. Anyone should be able to pick up that IEP and, and read it over the present levels and know exactly where to and how to assist your student for them to be educationally successful. It's so important that those are updated with any type of um, positive change or challenging change that your student may face because as our students age, they change and their needs may change. They may no, no longer need support in an area and we want to make sure that an area that they are currently needing support is, is recognized because it's listed in those present levels. So ending levels of performance of last year's goals, any new special education assessment or results, performance on district and statewide assessments, including identification of skills and knowledge already attained in retention to academic grade level standards. Classroom grades and observations, including behavior data and information from the student and parent you have are important information to share about your child. And, your, and you and the school professionals may see your child in different ways. Um, personally, for me, I know that uh, with my son's disability of autism, um, he struggles not only with that um, and also having dyscalculia, which is a numeral um, dyslexia, he, he struggles with math terribly. And we know that he absolutely loves certain characters. Uh, he likes Thomas the Train. So sharing that information in his present levels so that they can utilize things that really excite him into learning opportunities uh, keeps him engaged and focused and, um, and he enjoys doing work more. So something as small as a character that your student likes, adding that in, um, it can be educationally relevant because if you tie um, different curricula or subjects into these things, it can help the student become more successful. You want to include their interest in their strengths of non-curricular areas, as I just stated. So like Thomas the Train, adding him in there um, and how we can tie him to money and math. Um, any strategies or accommodations or assistive technology devices or services that have already shown success, all of those things are imperative in a, in a child's present levels. IDEA requires that an IEP include components of a measurable annual goal. Audience state the audience is to state the student's name, behavior, what observable see, hear, count action will the student perform or do. So Daniel will read, Jerry will write, Mark will read orally. Circumstances. Describe the instructional materials circumstances used to teach the goal. When provided opportunities for peer interaction, when presented with 10 two-digit division problems, 
degree or criterion. How well must the student perform the skill? So 92% correct as measured by twice weekly probes. Four out of five assessments as measured by a scoring rubric. Evaluation method of measurement. How the implementer measures the student's progress. Determine what tools, resource assessments will be used and what frequency the skill will be assessed. Direct measures, indirect measures. Goals, objectives, and benchmarks. In Kentucky, districts have the option of using benchmarks on goals on an IEP unless a student is on the alternate assessment. Remember, IDEA is the federal law and Kentucky Administrative Regulations, CARA, must use, or I'm sorry, are used at the state level. What is an alternate assessment or an alternate diploma? The alternate KPREP, Kentucky Performance Rating for Educational Progress, serves students with the most significant cognitive disabilities. These disabilities may require an alternate means of participation in Kentucky's statewide assessment to demonstrate achievement. The alternate assessment is designed to address the needs of the student by allowing greater depth of adaptations, modifications, and alternative modes of participation for the state assessment. Begin with the graduating class of 2013. If the severity of an ex exceptional student's disability precludes a course of the study that meet the high school graduation requirements established in section one of the administrative regulation leading to the receipt of a high school diploma, an alternative course of study shall be offered. This course of study shall be based upon the student needs and the provisions specified in 704 CARA 3 semicolon 303. Required core academic standards and shall be reviewed at least annually. A student who completes this course of study shall receive an alternative high school diploma to be awarded by the local board of education consistent with the graduation practices for all students. A local board of education may establish policies to award an alternative high school diploma to a former student, <clears throat> excuse me, who has received a certificate or certificate of attainment. And as you see in the chat there, um, Kelly just provided a document. So the Parent Guide to Alternate Kentucky um, Assessment, important terms to know. This is a wonderful resource if you are learning or considering or it has been considered that your child um, be placed on the alternate assessment. It gives a, a really good idea um, of what that looks like for the student. Objectives and benchmarks. Goals, objectives, and benchmarks. In Kentucky, districts have the option of using benchmarks on goals on an IEP, except if a student is on the alternate assessment. Remember, IDEA is the federal law, and Kentucky Administrative Regulations, CARA, are used at the state level. IDEA requires that an IEP include specially designed instruction, which is systematically designed and implemented to address the assessed needs of the student. Necessary for the student to make progress towards the annual goal rather than merely beneficial, planned, designed, and intentionally delivered by a special education teacher. 
not available regularly in general education to be degree or intensity needed by the student. Statement of related services. Related services can include transportation, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech. Related services means transportation and such, de such developmental, corrective, and other supportive services as are required to assist a child with a disability to benefit from special education and include speech, language, pathology, and audiology services, interpreting services, psychological services, physical and occupational therapy, recreational, including therapeutic recreation, early identification and assessment of disabilities in children, counseling services, including rehabilitation counseling, orientation and mobility services, and medical services for diagnostic or evaluation purposes. Related services also include school health service and school nurse service, social work service in schools, and parent counseling and training. So in the chat, are children in Head Start or pre-K covered under the special education laws. So yes, um, children in um, public education, free schools. Now there, there are a little bit of difference if they are parentally placed in a private preschool, um, the services that they can receive um, or that the school is required to give um, in the public education setting. Uh, in preschool, they are, can be evaluated for an IEP. They can receive related services if uh, the evaluation finds that, that they need, are in need of special education services. So yes, they would be covered under that entity. Um, in a private preschool setting, they would still be covered under that large umbrella that we spoke about earlier, which would be um, 504 uh, or ADA. So they, depending upon the private entity, um, they, they may not have an IEP or special education services, but, um, the law states that they are required to have access uh, to same age uh, non-disabled peers. So um, I hope that answers your question. If you need me to go into more depth, please let me know. Some of the related services included transportation, developmental corrective, and or supportive services required to assist a student with a disability to benefit from special education. Re uh, related services may include speech and language pathology and audiology services. Um, and, and we had just discussed this on uh, the previous slide. Um, a lot of these we've went over early identification and assessment of the disability is imperative, medical services for diagnostic and evaluation purposes, school health services and school nurse services. And one thing that is rarely ever used, um, but we, we tell our parents and families that we work with all the time, parent counseling and training, that is something that, can, that is a related service that can be written into your child's IEP to help support you uh, as the parent or guardian caregiver um, in making sure that you understand and um, assisting with your, your, your student's educational success. And that is something that we at Kentucky SPIN um, can also assist with too by providing that counseling and training. We're going to look at some accommodations. 
Um, here are a list on the screen of what could be utilized as an accommodation in an IEP. Visual prompts, previewing questions, advanced organizers, listening guides, large print materials, braille, reader, scribe, manipulatives, extended time, interpreter, reinforcement and behavior modification strategies, paraphrasing, calculator, and I'm sorry, calculator and use of technology. Now, we, here's the difference between modifications and accommodations. This is also extremely imperative to understand. Um, a modification means a change in what is being taught or expected from the student. Examples of modifying may, may look like making an assignment easier so that the student is not doing the same level of work uh, as other students would be an example. Shortened assignments. Students have, uh, students still has to do the same level or skill of work, but not match the work as other students do. Uh, I'd like to share a little bit of an example here myself about my son. Um, he gets modifications as well as accommodations. Uh, as I said earlier, he struggles really, um, really terribly in math. So modifying the math problem to his level, where in, you know, we're looking at that plot where he currently is, what is he capable of? Um, so if we are looking at his math problem, is does it need to be modified down to where he is just doing one step out of three? so that we can build that foundation and he can keep growing further. Um, an accommodation, we have already went over the list of accommodations. He receives a calculator as an accommodation. So in order for my son to be educationally successful, not only does he need that calculator in hand, um, but he needs that math problem modified to his level in order for his accommodation and modification to work together so that he's educationally successful. If we don't modify and it's written into the IEP and we just hand the accommodation of a calculator, he's not going to understand what it is we're expecting him to do. So really understanding the difference of those modifications and accommodations and appropriately um, pairing them together when necessary, when both are written into an IEP, so that the student has what they need to be educationally successful. Um, IDEA requires that an IEP include an explanation of the extent, if any, to which the child will not participate with non-disabled children in the regular class and in activities. It's so important to know that placement is not decided until the end of an ARC meeting. You should not ever walk into um, an ARC meeting before you've had a, a chance as a team to go over and create the IEP uh, and be told your child is being placed here before any of that occurs. It should always be um, the last part in completing the IEP. It should be determined after all other information has been discussed. Federal law requires students be served in, a, in as close to the regular classroom as possible with students who are not identified with disabilities. And, you know, if your students, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about this in a moment, um, least restrictive environment, but if your student is in a unit during the day, um, they still have the opportunity in the least restrictive environment to participate in special areas with same age non-disabled peers. Uh, it may look like specials. It could be lunchtime, eating with um, same-age non-disabled peers in the cafeteria. 
but making sure whatever um, whatever classroom your student is in, um, that it's least restrictive for them and their individual needs. IDEA requires that an IEP include the projected date for the beginning of the services described in the anticipated frequency, location, and duration of those services and modifications. Periodic reports. Progress on each goal and or objective, at least concurrent with report cards, but can be more frequent. Uh, and that's a discussion, you know, if you as the parent would prefer that you're getting reports more often or having more communication, have that written into the IEP. Be specific in when you will receive progress reports and what the progress reports will cover. The IEP guidance document states, in designing the measurable annual goal, the ARC must determine when the periodic progress reports will be provided to the parents. The report must be at least concurrent with report cards, but can on request be more frequent. Specific in when you receive progress reports and what the progress report will cover. IDEA requires an IEP ARC um, admissions and release committee meeting can be called at any time by the school or the parent. Remember, it is imperative you as a parent are part of the IEP team. Um, and you are not only just a part, but an extremely valuable part of the IEP team. Uh, and should be noticed in making changes to a child's IEP after the annual IEP team meeting for a school year. Uh, the parent of a child with a disability in public agency may agree not to convene an IEP team meeting for the purpose of making those changes and instead may develop written documentation to amend or modify the child's current IEP. Um, if changes are made to the child's IEP in accordance with this paragraph of the section, the public agency must ensure that the child's IEP team is informed of all of those changes. It is also important to note, yes, a parent is a vital part of the IEP team. Um, with that being said, the parent does not have to be there for an IEP meeting to take place. Um, that, that's something, it's, it's hard um, to understand that, you know, going into the special education process. Um, but yes, if a school can show proof of making multiple attempts in good faith to reach the parent for that meeting, to include them, and they haven't received response or a request for date change or anything like that, the meeting can convene without you. If it is part of a student's program, it absolutely has to be in writing in the IEP. Anyone should be able to look at your child's IEP and be able to implement their program. This is so, so, so very important. Um, probably one of the most important things that, that I say throughout this whole presentation. Um, if it is not written in the IEP, there is no agreement. There is no, um, ability of accountability that your student will receive the supports that they need to be educationally successful. It is always a wonderful thing to have a wonderful relationship with your student's school. Um, and, and sometimes we may hear things like, well, we don't need to, to put that in the IEP. We're doing that anyway. Um, maybe it's through a uh, multi- tiered system of supports. Uh, we do that for all students. Um, so it's it's good that you have a good relationship with your student school and you're having conversations like that. However, you wanna make sure everything is accurately uh, depicted in your student's IEP because you never know when that teacher may leave or you may need to move and change schools um, or, 
any possible thing could happen to where all of those same people that are in that meeting in that moment may not be with you um, in a week or a month. So making sure it's documented in the IEP appropriately so that your student can receive what they need to be successful and that you have the, the availability, the opportunity as a parent um, to hold accountable if your student is not receiving what they need to be successful. The special education cycle consists of um, consents, evaluation, written IEP placement, annual IEP review, and three year reevaluation. In these instances that may use existing information, so um, you can reevaluate at that three year reevaluation, or if there is something that um, you feel doesn't necessarily need to change with a reevaluation, um, you can ask that their previous evaluation results be um, brought forward to your current evaluation process so that you're not being reevaluated on something. So it uh, adopted. So for instance, my son is at his three year reevaluation currently. Um, we met as an ARC team as his parent. I felt all of the evaluations um, were appropriate except for reevaluating under the IQ level. Um, I didn't feel it was appropriate at this time to reevaluate his IQ. I feel like for him individually that we should wait until he's a little older. So at that time, I requested that we adopt his previous evaluation results of his IQ level. Um, and we just keep those until we're ready, till I feel he's ready for a new evaluation. And uh, we agreed as an ARC team or an IEP team to adopt those results. And that would be one less thing that he would currently need to be reevaluated on in this school year. So that is absolutely um, a possibility if you don't want that to change at this time. Um, and then also when a student turns 16, they should be reevaluated under that IQ um, so that they can get an adult IQ um, obtained for that student. This will be needed for services following high school uh, and will also be needed for the student who is a, who's planning on attending college. A reevaluation is an evaluation that happens after your child's initial evaluation. A reevaluation isn't the same as an annual review of your child's IEP, which happens every year, nor is it just additional testing. A reevaluation is a full fledged look at your child's needs. So, if your child wasn't originally found eligible and he's still struggling, it's possible that when your child first, first was evaluated, he didn't meet the requirements for an IEP. After a year, if he's still struggling, you may want to request a new evaluation and you can do so if he's already receiving supports and has a 504. If there's a new area of concern when your child is first referred for an evaluation, the school notes the area he, he or she was struggling in. <clears throat> for example, if your child was evaluated because he was having trouble with reading, the testing may have focused on dyslexia, but maybe once he received supports in reading, it became clear that he struggles in other ways. He may have a writing or attention issue. So it's appropriate that you ask for new evaluations to look at those areas. Um, and, and as we stated previously, under those evaluation categories, it's imperative to find um, and make sure you're matching with the appropriate evaluation categories so that um, your student isn't denied special education because they're not meeting criteria. 
Um, what is the purpose of a 504 plan? 504 plan is not um, for special education services. So I want to make that very clear. A 504 is, is different from the special education services because it um, is to receive access. It is for a student who is qualified with a disability, um, but will not really receive specially in designed instruction. So a 504 plan uh, addresses the unique learning needs of a student to give them equal access to school programs and activities to meet their learning needs. We have went over so much today um, and, and we have talked about a whole lot of wonderful resources out there that can assist you along your journey. Everyone will get a copy of the slideshow. And as you see here, we have some great, great resources um, that can walk you through a lot of the areas, uh, whether that be requesting evaluations, looking over um, evaluation criteria, um, sample lettering, questions and answers. So I, um, I would definitely encourage you to give these a look through because they are absolutely wonderful. And same for this page as well. And this concludes today's webinar. I am so sorry, I lost our screen. I'm not quite sure why. I will pause for just a moment to see if there are any questions. Oh, there we go. I do not see any questions. And if you would take a moment, uh, Davis is throwing a quick survey in. We do value your opinions and we would love to hear what you loved, um, what possibly could have been better, what was an aha moment or um, anything that you can tell us to uh, help make things better for the families across the state of Kentucky. I wanna thank you again and we look forward to seeing you next month.